Oh. Don't ask me that question. I cannot believe you asked me that question. No? Why not? Do you believe you actually asked me that question? Well, it was in the air, wasn't it? It has been in the air for 20 years. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Is this the real David Bowie? <laughs> that sounds like a Steve Martin question. Um, I, it's as near as you're going to get. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. In 1971, you sang, uh, look out, you rock and rollers, soon now you're going to get older. Was it that bad after all, getting older? Not at all. No? No. <laughs> no, it's, it's good. People have written books about you, they have written articles, psychologists have analysed you, called you schizophrenic, a person seeking for his identity, the sociologists have called you a phenomenon. How do you look upon yourself being just a case for other people? I look as rarely as often. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's uh, something that really plays much part. But do you read in... it? No. No? No. You don't think about it at all? No. Now that you've just brought it up, I'll have to think about it. But do you have some sort of conscious relation to the fact that you have enormous power being an idol? I don't have power being an idol. No, but people do. When you tell them to dance, they dance. No, they... People have their own willpower. They do what they do. You don't feel some sort of pressure that... Uh, None at all. That people do the same things as you do? N no, not at all. <laughs> What a strange question. No, do you think so? Mm -hmm. As an idol, people look up to you. I don't think I'm seen as an idol. I think I'm seen as a, a more than competent songwriter who's a, a good performer. I think idol is rather a kind of a 50s concept. I don't really think, you know, applies to people like me. Not, I don't think so. I think we're often regarded as old friends by people who have been listening to our work for some time. Um, I think maybe in the shallow form of idol that you mean, possibly the new bands like New Kids on the Block and that area, there's an idol kind of situation. But not for an artist at my age, no, not at all. Wasn't anything oracular about what I was doing. I was never an oracle for the times. I dealt with characters and I portrayed their lives and their feelings. I mean, that five years, for instance, applies to Ziggy Stardust, but most particularly just to him and his little world. Um, I don't think I've ever been involved in a kind of a song which says the world is going to die, says David Bowie. No. I think Ziggy Stardust knew that his world was dying. But that's a very different thing. That's playing with theatre rock. How did the, the idea of making such figures come up? Well, twofold. One was the fact that I didn't particularly feel comfortable performing as a, a straight-ahead singer on stage. And my interest had always been in, one of a better word, multimedia type situations. I liked the idea of combining theatre and music and um, the whole atmosphere and creating an atmosphere for stage. I thought it was terribly important. It was to me, anyway. It's what I wanted to do. So it then became necessary to devise characters to sing the songs of these little stories that I was writing. So it was really a, very much the first three or four albums that came out of that period were um, theatrical undertakings with music. But then I started to quite like singing them on my own, so I had to get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> so when the psychologists say that, oh, it's a person seeking for his own personality. Person it... seeking for his own person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you decide to stop making them? The characters? Yes. Last one, I think, was probably 1976, I think it was, with uh, Thin White Duke. Mm -hmm. And since then, it's been. Uh, very much a question of, uh, of, I think all the tours since then have just been me. They might have been pretty jazzy looking, some of them, but they weren't done as character. I don't know what a superstar is. The only thing that I have any notion of is the fact that I can usually get a good table in restaurants. That's all it's worth. Um, to be a good writer and a good performer takes, I think, obviously a certain ability to communicate ideas and then probably a lot of work I guess I guess but that's just being an artist you know which is a more important thing than being a superstar communication what does the word mean to you to be able to be uh, to be 
excited by a series of ideas and then to translate and re-communicate that excitement to other people. The famous piece with Pink Cross behind you, yeah. how did that come about? Absolutely no idea. I mean, it was the, the strangest uh, combination. I, the idea I thought was so quirky that it, it was worth doing. I mean, it's, you know, I couldn't do that anymore because he's dead, of course, so I was kind of lucky. But um, I thought it was uh, an extraordinary situation to be in. And I knew that nobody else would probably do that kind of thing. No, why not? Well, they don't, do they? <laughs> If we buy that there is an opposition between uh, what you call the intellectual brain and the emotional heart, which one of these have been the driving force in your career? Well, as I have a bicameral brain, uh, I'm ruled by both the left and the right at different times in my life. So uh, I think everything that I've written comes generally from the heart, although the process of putting it together is often one of... Uh, more of a cerebral effort. I think I often play around with different concepts and ways of putting songs together or putting shows together. But the initial thrust of anything that I do comes from a need to do it. So I think both take their importance in the work. Critics have claimed that you are more oh, ideas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then we'll just skip it then. <laughs> no, you can ask me the question, but no. have the question come from you, uh, not some critic you've read. Okay, well, well, I'm just interested in, in style. Yeah. If style is just as important as the content. For Press the, um, if by style you mean, uh, I mean, it's interesting if some songs are talking only about style, then uh, that has a certain kind of validity. It depends what aspect of um, one's work you're interested in projecting. I think I've almost run the full gamut from things that are fairly heartfelt through to pieces that specifically deal with artifice. Um, um, I don't think it's either one thing or the other. I think the only thing that's recognizable in my work is generally a form of writing. I mean, I think pretty much you can always recognize one of my songs as being one of my songs. But they tend to have a great variety because I'm very open to expressing myself in very, very different ways as the mood takes me. <laughs> <laughs> but now, as as an audience, yeah. or some, a person in an audience. Yeah. I look upon you as a bit more balanced, maybe, than you were 20 years ago. Oh, but of course. Yes, and, and the world Can't is... we all say that about <laughs> ourselves? Well, hopefully. Not you, when you're not old enough. No, but when I get old... <laughs> when you get old, you'll be able to say that. And the world is a bit more balanced, too. And do you think that... I think the world is in flux, no? Maybe. A yes. balance is... is um, a bit more. I'm not saying it's yeah. totally balanced. But I think there's a great positivism uh, internationally. Um, but unfortunately, as with all of life, it's, uh, you can never depend on more than one day's worth of anything. You just n n don't know the reverberations, which way they'll carry for, from any point. Are you getting married? Uh, I've been married five times in the last two years. <laughs> Twice in California. Once in Switzerland, I think. Twice in Mystique, and Eric Clapton, and Tina Turner. Mick and Jerry all flew in for it. Um, how do these things happen? Can somebody give me a sensible answer? I'm sorry? It's not going to be my last, last tour, but I'm afraid that it probably will be the last time that I'll be doing these songs. I think uh, after I've done these 25, 30 songs, whatever we decide to do, um, I won't be doing them ever again. David. And yeah. I, I very much want to continue the working the way that I'm working and keep myself excited. There's no point in yes, yes. continually doing uh, uh, songs on a, and reflecting on a past. So. Uh, David, da David, 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 David. David. Who have admitted on their latest tour that they're cashing in on their old material? Is this how you see it with the, the 1990 not, tour? They're not in Tin Machine, are they? Um, uh, no. Um, uh, cashing in on my songs? Are you kidding me? They're great songs. I'm a very good performer. Do you plan, do you plan to tour with Tim Machine? I'll tell you year? what I feel about that. There's about 15 arena artists worth going to see. And until I can't produce a show that is worth going to see, I won't stop doing shows, you know? And as for cashing in on old songs, that's ridiculous. That's 25 years of my life. Do you Get out of it. Yeah.
And this tour is like more like a wishing well tour, isn't it? Um, what do you mean by that? By people throwing a small coin into the wishing oh, well and, I see. and, and wishing a song. Making a hope, making a wish. Oh, I hope it's a bit more concrete than that, uh, in as much that of um, all the songs that I'm doing, 20 are songs that have been chosen by the public that are coming to see the show. Um, so I think that in itself is, uh, it enabled me to really do what I really wanted to do, which was to let the audience have its choice on what kind of songs they wanted to hear, and allows me the other four or five to choose my own particular favorites to put in. Um, I think it's, as it will be the last time I'll ever sing these songs, I think it's been a good, uh, a good thing to do. So the Norwegian audience can actually vote for the songs that they would like you to play? Absolutely, and they will certainly be taken into consideration. I must stress that the majority of what we're doing now are from the responses that we initially got in England, America, and the parts of Europe that had the phone system on. If there are any radical developments in the song choices for Scandinavia, I would automatically put in the differences. But I think the seven that we took out of each different continent, pretty much sum up uh, what people want to hear. What is your favourite song? Last night it was Station to Station, but it does, it depends on the, the performance. Some, some nights, some songs are better than others, and that changes a lot. And the last night in uh, Berlin, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, Station to Station was great. <laughs> So, when you finish this concert, are you going to go back to Tin Machine? Yeah, we finished recording the album um, in Australia, just before this tour. And uh, that should be released by about the end of this year. And then we'll be going out on the road. And we'll choose the songs. <laughs> <laughs>